be solving equations that have square roots, or well, that don't have square roots in them, but that we're going to use a square root to solve. So this process is exactly like what we just talked about the other day with simplifying square roots, except now instead of simplifying, we're going to be solving. Does anyone know the one thing that makes a uh, difference between simplifying and solving? There's one little sign that makes the difference. Thank you. It's an equal sign. If there's an equal sign, that means we have to solve. If there is, if we look back, if there's no equal sign, I mean, aside from that, if we just have square root of 18, we simplify it. If we have x squared equals 36, we've got to solve for x, like we did in unit 7, with all those 7 steps and all that fun stuff. So we're just going to solve for the missing variable. It's going to be very simple. It's the same exact process uh, that we did the other day. Um, as always, our goal is to get x all by itself. Remember, uh, we would, if we had like x plus 3 equals 5, we would ask ourselves, what am I doing to x? And we would say, oh, I'm adding 3. Well, here, what am I doing to x? Well, hold on. Let's not get ahead. If I have x with that little 2, what am I doing to x? I'm squaring it. What did we say the inverse of squaring something was? Taking the square root is the opposite of squaring something. So I feel like I'm going to confuse you with the explanation. Let's just show how we do it. Okay. We have to take the square root of both sides. So if we start with x squared equals 36, I'm going to take the square root of my left side, x squared, and I'm going to take the square root of my right side, 36. Just like always, we can break this up. The square root of 36. What two numbers multiply to give me 36? 6 times 6. We could also break up the left side. If I have x squared, how can I break up x squared? You're on the right track. x to the 1, x to the 1, or just x times x, right? Doesn't x times x give me x squared? Yeah. yeah, that's what x squared means. It's x times itself two times. All right. So if I break up the left side, do I have a pair of factors in here that I can pull out? Yeah, yeah I have a pair of x's. And on the right side, we see that we've got a pair of sixes that go out to the front. So now I've got just an x on the left, a plus or minus 6 on the right. There's my answer. x is equal to plus or minus 6. Everyone follow that process, what we did there? Yeah. Okay. What if we were to plug that back in? We had, what was it, x squared equals 36. And we found that x was equal to 6. So if I plug in 6, would that give me a true statement? What is 6 squared? 6 times 6, which equals what? Does 36 equal 36? Yeah. So that works out. Now, this is why the plus or minus is important. If I have, again, the same thing, x squared equals 36. If I were to plug in negative 6 for x, right, and I expand this out, I get negative 6 times negative 6. What's negative 6 times negative 6? Positive 36. 
Is that a true statement as well? Yeah. So this is why we have to use the plus or minus sign because positive six is a solution to this equation, but negative six is also a solution to this equation. We cover both those bases with that one little plus or minus sign. All right. We don't need a plus or minus sign in front of our x though because x can be anything. It could be a positive number or a negative number. So we just leave x as it is. When we bring out a number like we did with six though, we do wanna make sure we have that plus or minus sign in front. All right, so that's how we can solve with a perfect square, but we can also solve if it's a imperfect, an imperfect square like we talked about the other day. If I have y squared equals 24, again, what am I doing to my variable? I'm squaring it. What's the inverse of squaring it? Well, taking the square root. If I square root my y squared and I square root my 24, is 24 a perfect square? Yeah. Let's take a look on our chart. Is 24 one of our perfect squares? Oh, no. no, it's very close to 25 but it's not quite. So we'll have to do a factor tree. What two numbers would multiply to give me 24? Six and four. We could do eight and three. We could do 12 and two. They'd all work out. How can we break up six? Three times two. What about four? Two times two. So I've got three times two times two times two. I'm gonna write those under my square root. Two times two times two times three. Is there any pairs we can pull out here? Two. We got a pair of twos. What's left behind? A two and a three. We re-multiply those together, and it gives us a six. So my answer, like we saw up here, my x squared, when we take the square root, just simplifies to x. My y squared, when we take the square root, just simplifies to y. My two came out in front with a plus or minus sign. And inside my square root is what? Six. Boom. There's our answer. Y is equal to plus or minus two root six. Yeah. So uh, you mean like if we had a two times two times a three times a three? Yes, exactly. Um, and technically, that's a great point to bring up because if we look over here at 36, we know that's a perfect square, so we can take the shortcut, right? But if I did a factor tree for 36, it would be 6 and 6, 2 and 3, 2 and 3. So what would that turn into? Well, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. We got a group of 2s and a group of 3s, just like Brooklyn said. We bring them both out and multiply them. What do we get when we multiply two times three? Six. And that's what we got. So even if we have a perfect square, we can use the same process that we have with imperfect squares and get the same answer, right? Great question. Thank you for bringing that up. Do you guys see how it's exactly the same thing as we've been doing? The only difference is now we've got a variable in front pretty straightforward. So uh, if we take a look down here, if I've got number one, x squared equals 144, what am I going to do on both sides here? What do we? Good. I, I see your brain's working in the right direction. Let's, let's think back. What are we doing on both sides? We highlighted it. Take the square root, okay? I square root the left. I square root the right. Um, I don't think, I'm assuming Ms. Park doesn't want you to leave, so let's just hang tight for a little bit, okay? Um, so if we square root the left, like we said, this is x times x. What's 144? How can we break that up? 12, 12, 12 times 12. And again, we could keep going and break each of these 12s up into 4 times 3, but we don't need to 
Because I've got my matching pair right there with the 12s. Yeah. What's that? No. Yeah, if you know, like if you can recognize that this is a perfect square, yeah, you can just jump right to it. Like in number three. Well, let's finish number one and then I'll look at number three. I'll let you do two and four on your own. So I've got a pair of x's, a pair of 12's. x equals what? Plus or minus 12. That's it. It's exactly the same thing as what we've been doing, just with a variable in front. Now, like Nama Preet said, if I have number 3, b squared equals 100, what type of number is 100? A perfect square. So if I square root the left, square root the right, what's b going to be equal to? Just 10? Plus or minus 10. That's right. 2 and 4, we've got some imperfect squares, just to get ourselves a little bit more practice with that. See if you could break those down. Take out your matching pairs if you've got any, which you will. And then see if you can come up with an answer for what K is equal to in number two and what W is equal to in number four. Give it a try on your own, and we'll come back together in like a minute and see. Yeah, 10 times 20. So we gotta keep breaking them down. Yeah, break up the 10, break up the 20. Uh, we bring both pairs up and then multiply. So, we have this pair of two three, that uh, comes out as one single two. Four and another eight. pair of two. Uh, what do you call eight? Eight, 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 eight six, yeah. So, you could write this as five times four times four. Two plus a pair of fours and then four.
All right, let's take a look so I can get you guys to start practicing. Let's not say here's that up a little bit, okay? So if I've got 120, k squared equals 120, right? Yeah. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Immediately, I want to make a factor tree for 120. What two numbers would multiply to give me 120? That would be adding. I'm, I'm looking for multiplying. A lot of you guys got it right. 2 and what? 10 and 12 works too. Yeah, 2 and 60, 10 and 12, either one. I'm going to go with 10 and 12. Very nice. How can we split up 10? 2 and 5. Great. What about 12? 2 and 6. Awesome. And what about 6? 3 times 2. Awesome. Is there any other things we can split up? Nope. We've got a 2, a 5, a 2, a 2, and a three. I know that my left side is going to simplify to k, but my right side, I want to organize and see what I can do. I've got two times two times two times three times five. All right, everybody with me so far? Does that look right? See how we broke that down? Yes. Is there any pairs we can take out here? Yeah, what's my pair? 2 and 2. What do we do with this third 2? Uh, we, like, we like, we we That's right. We leave it behind and we multiply it with all those other left behind numbers. Yeah, 2 times 3 times 5, what would that give me? 30. 30. So 30's inside the square root. What did we bring out in front again? A 2 with a plus or minus sign. Great equals k. That's my full answer. Don't just leave the number. You've got to include the variable because we're using equations now. It's got to be k equals plus or minus 2 times the square root of 30. Any questions I could answer about that one? Because that one was a little bit more of a difficult one to start out with. Today's question? You got it? Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look at number four. W squared equals 48. Is 48 a perfect square? Yeah. No. no, it is not. It's close. 49 is a perfect square, but 48 isn't. So we'll take the square root of both sides. I'm going to do a factor tree for 48. How can I split up 48? Uh -oh. Six and eight. Six and you can do two and 24, four and 12. You'll get the same thing. 6 is 2 times 3. 8 is 2 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2. So now I've got 2, 2, 2, 2, and a 3. Did I do that right? Yeah, I did. Good. The square root of w squared is just what? W times w. We take out the w's. What does it simplify to? Just W. Follow the pattern. The square root of X squared became X. Square root of B squared became B. Square root of K squared became K. Square root of W squared is just W. Inside my square root, I've got a whole bunch of twos, four of them to be exact, along with a three. Is there any pairs I can circle up and bring out here? Yeah, I got two pairs of twos. We leave the three alone. Great. What happens to my two twos in front? We multiply them. And we get W equals 
What? Who's got my final answer here? Uh, plus, plus, or minus. plus or minus. Root three. That's how we say it. Four root three. Because saying four times the square root of three is too much, too many words. Plus or minus four root three is our answer. Give me a thumbs up. How much are we understanding this? Thumbs up makes sense. You feel like you can do some of it on your own. Thumbs sideways if you may have some questions once we get started, which is great. I'd be happy to come by and help. Okay. Good. Great. That's all for now.